Hi guys, it's Wei. Today I wanted to show you how to paint a single rose in watercolor. So here are the materials. This is a pad of cotton paper uh, from Arche in postcard size. And the paint is from Sinelier. Uh, it's an artist quality paint. The brush, the brush I'll be using is the number zero brush from Raphael as usual. In today's video, I'll be doing a voiceover to explain a few things and maybe share a few thoughts that I have on this painting. But I don't know if I'll be able to do that for the entire video uh, because I might run out of things to say. And if that happens, I'll just, um, I think I'll just put some background music to it. Um, but yeah, I'll be talking through at least some parts of this video. And uh, also, I want you to feel very free to um, mute it if you simply want to follow the painting process while listening to your favorite music or something like that. So I'm starting with, uh, let me see, I'm starting with French Vermilion for the first layer or the base layer. I'm also adding just a bit of sap green with French Vermilion because that's the environmental color um, from the leaves, which is kind of reflected on the flowers. It's not really visible from the naked eyes, but you can do that for your flower painting. As you can see that I've already done the preliminary sketch in pencil and I know that I don't usually show the drawing part in my videos because um, I've, I've just I've always wanted to keep the videos short so that it's easier to edit and also um, I think most most of my pencil sketches are like pretty light um, I don't really mind if the pencil marks are showing, but I just, I always try to make it as light as possible. So that might be, that might be a little hard to see on videos. But um, I, I read some of the comments here on YouTube and also on my Instagram saying that it would be, it would actually be nice if I could include the drawing part in my videos or um, do a separate video on how to draw roses and flowers. So yeah, that's something I would definitely consider for my next video. Um, like I would maybe record that part, the drawing part, or uh, maybe I'll just do a separate video on how to draw roses and flowers and things like that. Um, I don't know which which is better, so if you guys have any thoughts, uh, I would like to hear about them. You can just leave me comments. I was doing a little lifting on the petals because I feel like there's not enough light areas. And for the stem, I used sap green and forest green. These are the two colors that I use for basically all of my leaves, you know, all of the leaves in my flower painting. Um, because I feel like these are, like, these two colors are pretty much enough. Sometimes I add just a drop of, um, uh, red or the colors that I used previously. I know that some artists don't like to use directly the green paints. Uh, some people prefer to mix like um, yellow and blue to create a certain green color so that they can adjust the you know what kind of green they will use. But for me, um, I've always you know preferred to use these two colors for screen and uh, I'm sorry, did I say sap green? Uh, this is actually phthalo green light. That's the name from Sinalia, but it's, um, I would say it's very close to sap green. Some people ask me what is the really dark color that I often use. Um, so dark that it almost appears blackish sometimes. Uh, so that is the result of mixing two relatively dark complementary colors together. So for example, here I mixed forest green and French vermilion and even Venetian red because Venetian red is much darker than French vermilion. So I get a even darker, like blackish color with it. 
So here I'm just building layers on the stem and the leaves. I'm going for a second layer of my rose. Uh, as you probably noticed that my first layer is pretty faded at this point, so I'm just adding some more French vermilion to suggest the layers of the petals. This is just what watercolors do. The colors tend to fade away while the paint dries off. So some beginners may wonder why their painting doesn't really turn out to be as vibrant as they expect it to be. So yeah, sometimes it's necessary to keep adding layers. Just remember that the finished painting is always going to look less vibrant compared to how it looks like while the paint is still wet. And it's even more obvious when you're painting on cotton watercolor paper. Because I'm painting on postcard size watercolor paper, so this painting is actually quite small and it didn't take me a very long time to finish. So I decided not to make this video in time lapse, which is what I usually do to, um, <laughs> it's just easier for me to edit. But I also understand that it can be a little too fast to follow. Especially now I know that some of you like to watch and follow my videos. And I wanted to say that I'm really happy and honored to have helped and inspired you guys to paint in watercolor. And I would very much love to see your paintings. So if you decide to upload your painting on to Instagram, for example, to, please do not hesitate to tag me. I will of course leave my Instagram name in the video description.
My final step is to paint the shadow that the rose is casting on the table or whatever surface it's lying on. Here I'm using a mixture of forest green and French vermilion. Those are the two colors that come from the leaves and the rose. So I'm using these two colors to get this kind of um, neutral and grayish color. That was my first choice, but now on a second thought, I think it would be even better if I could just add a tiny bit of like ultramarine blue or a thalo blue. Um, yeah, um, that might bring out the leaves even better. But anyway, I like to think of it more as a personal, um, personal preference. As long as you're happy with the end result, then it's not necessary to like always follow the rules. I mean, rules are there to guide you into a better understanding as to how to paint certain things, but they shouldn't be the things to confine you into anything. And I always like to think that people who are interested in watercolors have a sort of free spirit, so that's something I like to keep in mind um, every time I paint. Okay, so that's pretty much the end of this video, and I really hope you enjoyed watching it, and I will see you in my next one. So bye for now, and thank you very much for watching.